Hello and welcome back to our Explore series. Today we're exploring Saucha, which means cleanliness or purification. So this series is looking at the first two limbs of yoga, the Yamas and the Niyamas. And these are sort of the moral code behind a yoga practice. The first five practices in this series related to the five Yamas. These are external practices, things we do outwardly. So things like uh, non-harming, non-stealing, non-attachment. It's how we relate to others and to the world around us. And now we move on to the five Niyamas. And these are more inward practices, things we do to and for ourselves. The first of which is Saucha, cleanliness or purification. So this relates to the way that we look after our space, our belongings, but also how we look after ourselves. We're going to talk a little bit about this as we go through this restorative yin yoga practice with some nice twisting postures to stretch out and release through the back. So come to a comfortable seated position to begin. If you have a folded blanket, you can sit onto that. If you have a cushion, that might be comfy as well. Whatever feels best. And then sit tall and let your shoulders relax. Bring your hands to rest on your knees or maybe in your lap. And if you're comfortable closing your eyes, then let your eyes close now. Let's take a slow breath in through the nose. Sighing softly out through the mouth. Again, breathing in through the nose slowly. Out through the mouth softly. And once more. In closing your mouth, let the breath move in and out of your body through your nose. As we start to bring some attention to our breathing, and as we lengthen both the inhalation and the exhalation, we are already moving into a practice of Saucha. So cleanliness, purification, this is relevant to the external, to the space around us, how we look after our homes, our possessions, for example. We also look at purification in the way that we look after our own bodies and the breath in yogic practices is considered to be one of the most powerful methods for purifying our energy. So we talk a little bit in yoga about energy channels, the Sanskrit term for these are nadis. And if you're interested in learning a bit more, then I have a video all about pranayama, breathing techniques, which goes into a bit more detail about the nadis. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. All you really need to know for now is that breathing deeply and breathing consciously can be a very effective way of not just calming your nervous system, helping to reset your energy, your mood, the way that you feel. Let's take another deep breath. And when you feel ready, you could open your eyes. We're gonna move through to tabletop position next, onto the hands and knees. So if you have a blanket, maybe keeping that under your knees so you've got a bit more support there. We're going to bring the big toes together, open the knees out slightly wider and take your left hand up towards the ceiling to begin with. We're coming into thread the needle pose. Take a breath in. As you exhale, bring your left arm down, thread it under your right arm, reaching all the way through and resting your head onto the ground. Make sure you're in a fairly comfortable position for the knees, for the hips. Let your head rest comfortably on the ground. And start to breathe a little bit more deeply in this posture. Notice where you might feel a sensation of stretching. Possibly through your back, 
possibly more around your hips. I'm going to give you a couple of different variations of this posture that you're welcome to try. But if you find that just resting here with your hand on the ground exactly as you are feels best, then stay with this. Please don't push yourself into a posture that just doesn't feel good. So two different options you could try from there. Lifting the right arm up towards the ceiling and bringing this arm down to rest against your lower back bringing your hand to rest against your lower back. This encourages the shoulder to lift and brings us into a slightly deeper twist. But if it's putting any strain through your bottom arm, your left shoulder, then release and bring this hand back down to the ground. The second option you can try is a little bit stronger. If you struggle with twisting postures, I wouldn't recommend trying this version. But if your back usually responds really well to twists, then something you could try is bending your left elbow, bringing the elbow to the ground and placing your palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra, pressing down through the top palm. So we end up in this slightly deeper twist position. Now this, if it's feeling strong, if you're having to strain to get into that shape, then please leave it for today and come back to where you were. When we practice yin yoga, it's so important that we're in a place where we're able to soften and relax. So I don't want you to be straining to hold a posture. You need to find a version of this shape where you can find softness, where you can be slow with your breath, and relaxed through the rest of your body. Come back to your breathing as your main point of focus. Breathing in and out through the nose, a slow, smooth, steady breath. Final breath here. And slowly we'll release. So release the hands back to the ground, gradually lifting up and coming up to a seated position. Relax your shoulders, pause and breathe. Before we take that posture on the other side, I'm going to take a moment to give the knees a break. So you have two options here. You could come to a standing forward fold position or dangling pose, and I'll talk you into that in a moment. If you'd rather stay low to the ground and you just want to rest, then stretch out your legs, lean back into your hands, take a break there. If you want to come up to dangling pose, then tuck your toes, walk your hands back, and come up to stand with a bit of space between your feet, quite a generous bend in your knees. So you're trying to bring your belly down to rest on your thighs like this. And then let your arms drop and let your head go as much as you can. Try to shift your weight so it's over the center of your feet. Take a slow, deep breath. See if you can soften into this shape a little bit more as you exhale. Okay, then slowly making your way back down to the ground and coming on to the hands and the knees. Bring the big toes together, take the knees wide. We're going to thread the needle pose on the second side. 
So take your right arm up to the ceiling to begin. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, bring that arm down, threading all the way through, resting your head and your right shoulder onto the ground. And just pause there, first of all, before you try any other variations. So make sure the knees are in a comfortable position. Make sure your head is in a place where it can rest comfortably. And then if you want to try any variations with the arms, the first option was lifting the left arm up and bringing the hand to rest against your lower back. You could give that a try for a breath or two and see how it feels on this side. And the second option was bringing the palms together in prayer position, taking that left, uh, sorry, taking the right elbow out a little wider on the mat until it's in a place where you can support this. Final breath here. And then slowly we'll start to release. Gradually lifting, coming back up into a seated position. And take a moment there to rest and recover. round to sit with your legs out in front of you. Bend your right knee and cross your right foot over to the outside of your left leg. Now there are two options for this next seated twist. You could keep your right leg straight and that might be a little bit gentle on your knees or you could lean over to the right and bend your right knee bringing your foot in towards the side of your body. Placing this left foot to the ground with the sole of the foot firmly planted there. If that's not working for you, come back to the straight leg at the bottom. Then sit as tall as you can here and use your right arm to hug your knee in towards your chest. So your right arm is going to sort of pull that knee in towards your body. And then your left hand is coming to the ground behind you as we rotate and turn towards the left. You can lean into your left palm on the ground behind you here. And sit tall, turn your head slightly towards the left as if you were trying to look past your left shoulder. And stay with this, breathing into this shape. You could close your eyes there if you like.
Now as we go into just one more minute with this posture, you have the option to stay as you are. Of course, you always have the option to come out of the pose and rest. But if you feel ready to go a little deeper into a twist, you could bring this right arm up and take your elbow to the outside of your knee, kind of pressing your elbow against the outer edge of the knee so you can sit taller and maybe twist into the pose just a little bit more. Always being careful with your back with these twist postures and again listening to your body's cues if it's feeling a little twingy if it feels a little too strong then just back away come back to hooking the elbow around or come out of the pose and rest final breath here then start to release, coming back round to the centre, uncrossing the legs. Lean back into your hands and just let the legs relax for a moment. And then we'll bend the right knee and cross the right foot over to the outside of the left leg. Sitting tall, placing the sole of the foot on the ground there. Again, you have the option to keep the left leg straight or you could lean over, bend your left knee and bring the foot in towards the side of your body. Sitting tall, repositioning so that you can sit tall. And again, straightening the bottom leg out is a nice option if it's just not working for you like this. Then wrap your left arm around your knee. Use that arm to actively hug your knee in and place your, rest, your right hand to the ground behind you. Keeping length through the spine, start to slowly twist to the right. And even if you went for that, that uh, kind of hooked elbow position on the other side, start off with this gentle aversion first, and we'll progress to that when we get there. Turning the head slightly towards the right, softening through the forehead, Keeping the breath slow and steady. So now that we've been here for a little while, if you want to try taking the elbow to the outside of the knee, you could try that option, pressing the elbow against the outside of the knee to help you rotate a little bit further. But again, only if it feels safe, only if your body feels happy there. Final breath here. Gently release and come back to the centre. Releasing the legs, leaning back into the hands. And recover. Now we're going to come to a seated position somewhere you can sit comfortably. And we're taking a pranayama next, a breathing exercise called Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing. We're going to use the fingers, so your index and middle finger can come to the centre of your forehead. Use your more dominant hand, so for me that's my right hand. And then your thumb will be closing one nostril so that you can breathe in and out through the other. And then you'll switch and use your ring finger or maybe your little finger to close that nostril so you can breathe in and out through the other one. So we'll be alternating between both sides, breathing in through one side, out through the other, in through that side, out through the other. I'll talk you into it, but the thing to remember is we breathe in and then switch, breathe out, breathe in, then switch and out. 
So we're always switching sides. And this is a very powerful practice for cleansing and purifying the nadis, the energy channels in the body. It's also brilliant for sort of clearing out the sinuses, helping to balance the left and right side of the brain, bringing us to a state of balance. Also can be very calming for the nervous system, a really nice practice to do before bed. So get comfortable, try and sit tall, take a normal breath. And then bring your index and middle finger to your forehead. Close your right nostril and take a breath in through your left side. Close your left nostril and exhale through your right. Inhale through your right. Close your right, exhale through your left. Inhale, left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Keep that going at your own pace. Sitting tall, if your elbow needs a little support, use your other hand to support it. you lose track at any point don't worry you can release the practice or you can continue remember we breathe in we switch and then we exhale now finish the cycle of breath that you're on And then let your hand come down to rest. Keep your eyes closed and start to breathe slowly in and out through both nostrils. your attention back to the concept of saucha, cleanliness, purification. There are lots of different ways we can implement this practice. It can be looking at the kind of food you're eating, what you're drinking, but also what you consume in terms of TV, social media, what you're absorbing. And so the question that I'll leave you with today as we take the next couple of minutes in quiet reflection and meditation is this. What is one small action you could take today with Salcha in mind to benefit your well-being? 
What is one small action you could take today with Saucha in mind to benefit your well-being? Take a slightly deeper breath. And we'll close by bringing our palms together in Anjali Mudra. Thank you for joining me for this practice. I hope you're feeling good, feeling relaxed. And you have some ideas in mind about how you might be able to implement Saucha in your life, on and off your yoga mat. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you for our next practice together very soon. Thank you.